welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. Thanks for coming and checking us out. So if this is your first time checking out the show, what's up? I'm Jersey. Nice to meet you. Hopefully this doesn't suck and you want to go back and watch all the previous episodes. We are in the 40s. This is a weekly uh, podcast, so you have lots to catch up on. But this is available via iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, also on YouTube and Facebook. It's everywhere. So wherever you want to watch or listen, I definitely appreciate it. And if you're listening right now on iTunes or Google Play or any of those places, it is your duty to leave us a review. Tell us how we're doing. Give us a five star if you like it. Uh, We very, very much appreciate it. And share this content either way. Um, If you are part of the nation, you're one of those people who watch every episode, you comment on every episode, you thumbs up, you do it all, what's up? It's because of you I get to keep doing the show, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And finally, if you are part of the elite, you do all that stuff I just said, all the cliches, subscribe, thumbs up, and everything else, and you buy your supplies from me, double thank you because it's because of you that I get to eat dinner. So thank you, thank you. Uh, If you want to order supplies from me or Window Cleaning Resource, my number direct is 862-312-2026. You can call or text me. You can also Facebook message me, Vox me, or Smoke Signals, whatever you want to do. Get a hold of me, and I very much appreciate that. Uh, Real quick, I want to do a couple shout-outs. Scott, uh, Aaron Kranz, probably butchered your name in. What's going on, brother? Uh, John Lang, uh, what's going on? David and Nicole Rodriguez. What's going on to you two? Uh, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, uh, Gary Felton. Thanks just for all you guys to, uh, who support me out there too. Definitely appreciate that. <sighs> okay. So all that said and done, we are here with the man, Mr. David. How are you, Mr.? How are you? Doing pretty good, Josh. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> so what's going on man you're just you're doing big things we're seeing you all over the place like tell me how how things are for you right now how's where are you now what what's going on you were just in arizona you're all over the place what's going on i've been told that we're living the dream and i like to answer with apparently um it uh it can be prettier it can be prettier than it looks sometimes so yes we've been uh we've been we've been traveling i came back to minnesota to find that it's going to be in the teens again next week in the first week of april so i booking plane tickets right now to get out of here. Um, that's, that's why I live in North Carolina, not Wisconsin. Yeah, anymore, but keep going. yeah. I remember when we used to be neighbors and we could relate to the the wonderful part of owning a service business in these, uh, these just great climates where yeah. we were somehow born. Hey, yeah. there was three good months. I mean, they were humid and there was lots of mosquitoes, but they were all right. They were... <laughs> you get, you know, you get a couple up here. What I like about Minnesota with how much we travel is like you really do get every season. So my, my, I will know that I have made it in life when I am living in Oceanside, California with my beautiful family with a beach as my backyard. We're right. not quite there yet. But, you know, for all the great places in the country that there's awesome weather in Minnesota, you really truly do get all four seasons. And I, being a, uh, higher blood pressure, more excited kind of guy. I like the fall because it keeps me it keeps me nice and cool. So right, yeah. as I <laughs> go up, I can be leveled out by right, the, right. the by the way. The, <laughs> if anybody the, doesn't know you, they're gonna they're gonna wonder what they're talking about with the whole Yeah, yeah a little bit. I can get a little excited. Me and Josh, uh, me and Josh, how long have we known each other now? We were just chatting about this before we got a what, seven, seven, seven years? Plus years probably, yeah. We were I I will always tell the funny story about uh, you know. So we all, a lot of us meet on the internet. You know, we have these we have window sounds, uh, window clean course and different, bad, different but yeah. Groups. Yeah, we meet, so we meet on the internet and these online shady dating sites. And <laughs> so I'm talking to all these people. I'm talking to like Chris Lamarinis and Josh and Seth and uh, Larry Lasco and all these people. And I remember this is all on the internet. We've never talked on the phone. It's like a couple months before we meet. And so I, I'm on Voxer with Chris, and I think it's the coolest thing that Chris Lamartini is the rock star is, <laughs> is answering my Voxers. Right, right. So I'm like, all right, dude, we're on Bourbon Street, we're coming. And I'm walking up, and I see everyone standing there, and you know, it's the internet, I know what all these people look like, and I'm like, hey guys, I, I'm Dave Carroll. And they all, and like everyone, Josh included, turns to me and looks, and Chris is just like, we thought you were a 47 year old nerdy dude. And I'm like this 26 year old smoking tattoo, swearing, yelling, all of these, these great characters. You were still in your wife beater phase too. So you had like the white, oh, that was your main, like main outfit. Yeah. 
tat, tat, tattoo covered wife beater smoking and yelling. I just have a decent vocabulary so I can come across <laughs> a little bit smarter than I appear on the internet. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's always fun to like relive that in my head, but yes, if it, if it looks like me and Josh, if this is not the first time we've met, uh, it's not, it's not, it's not. we've Go met back. a couple times, couple times. Go back. Couple few times, and it would, like Josh and I, I think we always could get along well. One, because Josh was in, even though he's five hours away in Milwaukee, we were in the Twin Cities. Just you know, you meet people on the internet on these creepy dating sites, and right, right. you find out that they they live close enough to you that you don't hate them. Like, yeah. hey, you're not you're not right in my you know. You try to like be friends with everyone locally, and then like you know, never for all all of you that maintain your local service business relationships, I applaud you because it's not like. I don't have beef or hate anyone in my local area, but it's like your buddies with people. And then you kind of realize like, wait, actually, yeah, maybe I don't want to hang out with you that much. <laughs> or maybe that's not just like, you don't like the person. It's just like, you know, competition can be a funny thing. And I've always looked at business in an interesting way. So like, I'm a lot of things. I'm no engineer and I'm no inventor. Anything that I will have success with in this lifetime someone watching this or hearing this or maybe that never pays attention to this has done what I'm trying to accomplish previously. Yeah. And so like competition to me, I would always say like about our window cleaning business, power washing business, whatever, like you could open up a hundred people next door and I wouldn't care. And I think about it now and as you scale, so like this year uh, we're finally in like the seven figure club. We, we, we made it. It's yeah. not, it's not that fun for all of you trying to make that magic million dollar number. It's by promise. It's not everything it's cracked up to be, but you get there and now you find yourself more concerned about like that young 26 year old yeah. you see in the Facebook group. That's from the suburbs. You're like that little guy. I got to keep my eye on him. Yeah. It's like, why? I, I never thought about any of this before, but now for the little bit of time that I'm still involved in my service business, I find myself like if I pop into one of the Facebook groups and I see some, young some young 26 year old go getter <laughs> seven years ago i'm a young crusty kid. 30 right? this little young <laughs> young whippersnapper out here trying to trying to come out here and corner the market it's just it's funny how uh how things change i would love to say that i've grown up a ton i can't say that that's uh <laughs> that's completely the case all the time but it's just it's funny to see how your how your outlook is on these things um so yeah it's just fascinating you know what it is a competition is like uh it's a dog park like when you go to con conventions and the internet and everything it's like going to a dog park none of the dogs fight there because no dog owns that but as soon as you get in your own backyard then that's when things don't <laughs> work out right yeah my dog that was my dog growl that was good that was good <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah dude I, I i relate completely and it's just it's funny so we have uh actually this weekend it's the last week of march 2018 um as we're filming this and we have the Minneapolis Home and Garden Show. And historically in our company, Lion Share, we've done it. We did it like the first four or five years every year. We do like cute little 10 by 10. You know, you're kind of at a big show like this, a couple hundred thousand people. Like you're kind of the only company investing because it's a couple grand to do that. So yeah. this year, I actually do some live video on it. We went all out. We got like a 10 by 20 or all out. Well, we got a 10 by 20. We like, I think we're like, like nine, 10 grand into the show this year. And so it's like, Again, just with the evolution and seeing what's going on, like everyone's down there right now. I'm in the I'm in the A type data, our other our other business. I'm in that office right now, but like the lion share people are all down there now and it's like busy, buzzing, going, and it's like I feel very humbled to not be involved in the day to day anymore. But I also like there's a little part of me that like wants to hit them like guys, what are you doing? Right. Everything like I get to go down after lunch today and we're going to hang out and everyone's going out tonight. We got like a couple tables and bottle service and hotels for everyone. Cause we're downtown to like have some fun, but it's nice. just like, I almost feel like, like as even you as I'm be, talking, it's like, sentimental. Yeah. Like, I'm going to like, I should, you can put a lion share shirt on and just kind of sneak <laughs> up have, into the I background. Brought, I brought my hoodie so that I could, yeah, I didn't yeah. always, I'm trying to step up my, my Chris L game with my, Ooh, my flannels. I like yeah, that. Uh, you have to have it like more open though and just i don't care yeah, see, yours looks too presentable it. yeah i know I, I have this weird like formality i'm trying to get there i'm trying to get there to someday wear, like yeah someday. you know you, you wear like the same shirt every day like go i think so I, was, I was complimenting chris on his shirt and he's like yeah kate got me 30 of them and i'm like god I'm not there yet that's the kurt kempton way kurt was like i just i don't want to dress myself anymore it's just another hassle just everything the same boom I have I have too be I have too big of a sneaker fetish to not have <laughs> like if I wore the same shirt every day then I couldn't go through my shoes like I am I don't know Josh you know yeah. this we've known each other you're fancy I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't quite sorry fancy okay. AF 
How can I not say I'm fancy when I was just going to tell you I have a hundred pairs of sneakers? That's, but it's like, my, okay, so people have like, like hobbies, right? Like you go camping or you like, you like to build things or like, like our general manager, Drew, that we hired for Lion Share, like he makes his own spices. He grows peppers and makes, you know, my, I don't have hobbies. I have habits. My <laughs> habits are working, buying shoes and working. So yeah, man. that's if of all the things you can have habits for, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> hey, you know, I, uh, yeah, that, that balding and smoking and yelling, you know, those could go in the, in the list. Those are, well. those aren't even maybe habits. Those are just loves, passions of yours, just, if you will. So if life is about self-awareness, you got to focus on what you're good at. If I'm good at a couple of things, it's yelling, smoking and buying sneakers. So nice. I mean, you no, know, Boom. There you go. Dave Carroll in a, in a nutshell, but you said, I, you said a tight data. Tell us yeah. about that. Like the, we are to the age of kind of marketing different, right? EDDM was a thing and it is a thing, but there's so much more that wasn't there. When we started, when we first knew each other seven years ago, it was a whole different world. Dude. Dude. Yeah. So the way I like to explain it is, you know, you have, you have the phases of marketing. In life, you know, we're only going to be here for like, what, if, if, if we make it to 50, we're lucky. If you make right. it to 80, you're blessed. So yeah. let's say you got 50 to 80 years on this planet, depending on your habits and traditional marketing, traditional marketing has been, I think the first association that you can date back to where people started talking about their business and marketing and collecting data goes back to like 1879. It was one of the Carnegie's back in 1879, created an association. It was business owners that were collecting data to share with each other in an effort to grow their businesses. That was so like the goes, first BNI almost. Way ever, way ever. The first, <laughs> yes, the first anything. BNI is such a negative annotation for some people. So it's like, it is. If we, if we, can, if we take away the needing to show up, like you can't not show up three times a year and there yeah. were like – Covered wagons and snake oil and all that good. <laughs> so like we go back. Just think like t turn your head to history. You know when things get old, you turn your head to like black and white when right, you're remembering right. them. So it's black and white. And Andrew Carnegie or whoever these people are sitting in this room, they're like, we're going to get together and we're going to share information about our businesses so that we can do this thing called marketing. So we can take people by the hand and walk them down a path through psychology, through emotion, and get them to do something that we want to. So mm -hmm. that's – that's where the seed was planted. So now we go through, keep that reel going in your head. So now we're going like 1910, 1920, 30s, Great Depression. And then we have like, like go think, I always think history and you think like the phases of the presidents. And so yeah, like yeah. I went to nine. I went to nine high schools. So I have no formal education or anything. So half of this year I'm, I'm making up or I, I don't read books that often. So I read stuff, but whatever. Right. So my history is weird. But so if I, if I misstep in my order of presidents, don't hold me to it. <laughs> so you have like these presidents, right? You have like, like Roosevelt happened and all these people and these things are going on. Well, what happened in like 1950, 1960 from Carnegie and his people, great depression, black and white stuff. Now we go to like first, second world war happened. Now we're going to like fifties, sixties getting there. Right. Now we have like technology is kind of starting to, to fizzle. Those lights are going on and things are starting to happen. Well, data is being collected by the government. Where do you live? Who are you? What'd you buy? What kind of car do you have? You know, do you have a dog? Like just all this stuff and it's being put together while traditional advertising. Now keep fast forwarding. Now it's now black and white. It's that like grainy, pastel-y, right, right. <laughs> like first TV, like, like an episode of Mad Men, like right in there. So now let's say it, let's Mad Men, right? Madison Avenue, advertising, like the heart of where this stuff, I'm not gonna say began, but where it like really started permeating and going. So now we have like these advertisers and these copywriters and this media and these long page sales letters and this stuff. Like if you read the book, Scientific Advertising, as Clyde Henderson or Hendrickson, I think this book was written like 106 years ago, <laughs> but it's still followed to this day in marketing. And the yeah. reason that I'm rambling like this is because all of this traditional advertising, this is where we live. We still send mailers. We still put up billboards. We still put things on bus stops. We still get that stupid call from the guy trying to get you to put your business on a golf card because <laughs> your business, you're, you advertise to affluent golfers and the one thing they want to pay attention to is your stupid business name on their golf card yeah. that they wrote some number on, you know, like whatever. Right. So all of this traditional marketing, it's all been happening, right? Since Carnegie, black and white, Pastel, Madison Avenue, traditional advertising. And like, I'll bring it to where personal experience, we this last year for Lion Share Maintenance, we sent 
657,000 direct mail pieces. Like we order by the pallet in direct mailers. Now we went yeah. from like my first order, just like everyone watching this was a thousand pieces that I ordered the wrong stock on and still mailed them out. Then we ordered right. 2,500 didn't work. Then we did. I just kept dumping money in, into mailers and they work to keep doing them. So traditional advertising works and we have that right. Traditional advertising. But now we're in this age where Josh was saying 12 minutes ago when I started explaining this, like where we met digital advertising, right? Facebook, we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, 1991, Yahoo really came out. Al Gore invented the internet. Now all of this traditional marketing, this traditional marketing now became digital advertising, right? But all of this traditional marketing where this data was being collected, what made digital advertising, Facebook ads, Google display, when you go to Home Depot, you click on a lawnmower, you don't buy it, you go on Google, there's the lawnmower staring you in the face. Yeah. Happens from data, traditional marketing, digital marketing that we have now, my, you know, some people call it crazy. I like to, the difference between uh, eccentric and crazy is money. So I'm not eccentric yet, but I'm working <laughs> on it. So my crazy brain says, why is no one paying attention to the data science? Because traditional advertising, they've been collecting this advertise or this data that they, the, the way they put marketing in front of people. If you're a homeowner, if you're a renter, if you, oh, if you bought a house for this much, if your interest rate is this, if your credit's this, if you do this, whatever. You use traditional advertising and you go buy a list of people to send a mailer to, right? Based off the income of their house or how right. much they made last year on their taxes. Now you can use that information. There's a lot of news this week about Facebook's targeting being taken away. Because now for the past couple of years, Facebook opened it up more than anyone. But you could use the data collected through traditional advertising. You could put it on digital advertising. So you could – Take someone based off what they do and show them a Facebook ad. Show them an ad before they watch this podcast on YouTube or wherever yeah. they're doing it. A-type data, what I found and where my, you know, where I spend my day, it's the data science. It's all the information that's being collected that can apply to digital advertising. Cause over the past couple of years, you know, through speaking, like Josh, the conventions we've been to together, some of the other conventions we go to outside of the industry for the marketing stuff. We've been very fortunate and just paid people to be their friends to like <laughs> get in front of these huge digital marketing agencies. And I always thought there was a guy like me that was just so obsessive about the data, like why people did what they did, how this information is collected, how can it be used to send someone a postcard, show them a Facebook ad, show them a Google display ad. And what I found is that people just don't care about this stuff and I do. And so me and my friend Adam sitting over here across the desk from me, we started a business to focus on the data, take it to digital marketing, but also be able to use traditional marketing because that's not going to be over in our lifetime. So yeah. in a nutshell, traditional marketing, digital marketing, data science, A-type data. There you go. We try, to, try to, we try to look at it all. The data side of things, people don't understand where it comes from or how they get it or anything. But like you said, it's, I mean, governments know how much you make. They make, they know what you eat for lunch. They know everything. So it's getting all that data that used to be in like football binders and things and then just having it there. And it's not new. That's the most fascinating thing to me, Josh, is people are like, you know, you get kind of freaked out. I've seen this happening a lot on the internet. You know how people have all their like home Alexa, Google Home, all yeah, that. Yeah. So like you'll hear a, you'll you'll say something on your phone, or you'll say something at your house, and then you'll see an ad for it, and you're mm -hmm. like, the world, the feds, cover my, cover <laughs> they they know they Put know what in. I'm doing. When in reality, like yes, is getting retargeted off your voice scary? It's terrifying. Guess what, guys? See this thing, this thing right here, this yeah. computer in our hands. All of this data has been collected since before, like, so I'm 32. All of this data has been collected since before my parents were born and my parents are in their 70s. Yeah. It's just being used differently now. So whether you go to Home Depot and you see the lawnmower you didn't buy on another page, you're like, that's freaky. They're following me around the internet. That company's got it together. They're using the same advertising methods as they were yeah. 50 years ago. The main difference between traditional marketing and digital marketing is the ability to collect and use the data because I love this example. So we're investing in billboards this year for lion share maintenance. So we've been shopping them out, pricing them. And you can get billboards for like 10, 15 grand a month for like a decent cycle. But let's say I put up this billboard, right? Or I send you this mail piece. I send you a mailer. It's eight and a half by 11. It's huge. It's thick. It's beautiful. What did I do? Cause I'm a savvy marketer. 
I put a call tracking number on it. So if you get that mailer, you can only call this number. I put a unique URL. So if you read this mailer, you're going to go to only this website because I put it there and I can track you. I even put one of those stupid little QR codes that no one uses. <laughs> so you can take a picture of this thing with an app you don't have on your phone and be taken to another thing that I spent time on just to track you. Yeah. Guess what happens? I mail this to Josh. Josh gets it and goes, dude, I love it. I need this. What does he do? Cause he's busy. We want things every eight seconds. You know, it's a digital world. <laughs> Josh got this and he put it in his drawer. And a week later, when he got a reminder that he needed what he forgot about, cause he's a busy guy, he pulls out this mailer and he goes, lion share maintenance. And he takes it, he looks on his phone and he types the company in on Google and he clicks on their website and he looks on the phone number in the corner and he calls it and he goes, Hey, I want my windows cleaned. And the lady who does her job at the office goes, great, we can do that. How did you hear about us? He goes, I looked you up on Google. <laughs> so all of that work that you put into that traditional marketing was pointless. It wasn't pointless yeah. because you can track to a point. But with digital marketing, if I take a list of people, whether I buy it or I target it, I can put you, I can put an ad in front of you. I can have you click on that ad. I can have you go to a page. And based off what button you click on and what page you go to or what form you fill out and what information I grab or whatever you do, I can track every single step of that process and I can show you a different message on a different platform. Let's say, say I showed you a Facebook video and it was the first time you ever heard of Lion Share Maintenance and I could capture, I only wanna show an ad to people that watched half of that video. Cause we know if you watch a video on Facebook, one, two, three, four, five. If you got my attention for five seconds, you got something that I oh, want. Yeah. So if I can take an audience and take only half the people that watch that video and show only those people a certain message, a certain offer, a certain coupon, and based how off those specific people interact with that certain offer, I can do something totally different. I can't do that with that mailer sitting in Josh's drawer, yeah. but I can with digital advertising. And the traditional method, what we like to do with A-type data Call it cross-channel marketing if you want to look this up more. Just Google it, cross-channel marketing. You can take someone based off who they are. So we know if we own a service business, let's say our average customer is from 35 to 55 years old. They usually have a kid or two. Maybe they're married and they're a little bit affluent because they're spending money on cleaning stuff at their house. So we can put them in that box. Yeah. But a 35-year-old and a 55-year-old, it's a different message to a different place. Yeah. Well, your mailer, when we order 100,000 mailers last week, saturation, we're gonna send those out to the whole world and hope whatever comes back. But the more intimate, we talk about marketing and being about psychology and emotion, the more intimate we can make that message. If you can show me a picture of a guy with a flannel shirt on that has two kids, that drives a Camaro, that owns a business, I'm going to relate to that more than a 50 year old guy who's divorced, who drives a minivan. If you show me that message and I'm on Facebook more than I check my mailbox, more than I'm on Instagram, more than I'm on wherever. So where you reach me is going to be different yeah. than when, where you reach Clyde, the divorced 50 year old who wants the same thing as Dave. You just got to give it to him in a different way. And so when you come to terms with, you know, targeting and understanding your audience and that intimacy of grabbing this person by the hand. Where do we talk about meeting each other on these shady internet chatting date room <laughs> sites? So if you see some random video of some random thing that you want on the internet, you need to create intimacy. You have to get these people to trust you. And that's why regardless of what you do, why we focus on the data, depending on where you're at in the customer cycle, Awareness, consideration, conversion. Warm, I'm sorry, cold, warm, hot. They're the same thing. Yeah. So you need to take a cold customer. They don't have any awareness. You need to raise awareness. You're warming a customer up. Consideration, they're starting to trust you. <coughs> Excuse me. Conversion, they're on fire. They want to <laughs> fill that form out. They want to swipe that card. How do we get them from cold to warm to hot? I don't yeah. have a stove. I don't know. I'm trying to get you to trust 
what we're talking about so I can get you to click on a button. Yeah. So instead of, and then, and maybe that button click, maybe you go to a website, you never do anything again. Then maybe I send you a postcard or maybe I send you an email. And then based off, if you read that email, you see a Facebook ad or you see an ad on Google or you get a text message or one of those drop voicemails. Like yeah. there's so much going on in the world with liter like, just here, guys. It's just the data that's collected on this little guy right here. And you can take this to simply understand if you know who you're selling, what you're selling to, or who wants what you want, you can just understand their behaviors yeah. off of this. And based off what they do, put a certain message in front of them to trust you. Now, if they trust you, you have something that helps them have a mutually beneficial relationship where they give you money for something you have and everyone's happy and jiving and yeah and, then, yeah. and literally i would rather spend a dollar as compared to a penny on somebody who is completely targeted and you know exactly what you can do your marketing dollars go so much farther the more and more laser focus that's where you talked about facebook for a second Facebook was the first one where you don't have to talk to an ad agency anymore. You don't have to do any of that. You can go on there, say, I like women with red hair. I think that's who buys more of my services. You can find that and dial it in, you know. But being in front of people – sorry, go ahead. No, Facebook's taking all that away. Well, you gotta, now, you yeah. Gotta, you got to buy lists now, no. which I – sorry, selfishly as a list broker, I'm not – I'm not <laughs> – You're not. Right? But, but Facebook's taking away that third-party data. So the ability to, what happened, Facebook was playing in a gray area for a long time. All of that targeting that you're talking about, Josh. Yeah. Like Facebook let us, the advertisers, the business owners, play in a gray area for three to four years. Now, privacy policies and certain things. Like Facebook isn't taking away all the targeting and going, ha ha, figure it out. You've never had to deal with this before. All these 27-year-old marketers sitting in their mom's basement eating Cheerios in their underwear, like they're freaking <laughs> out because their little business now is going to be over. But right. like... Facebook is just taking it back to traditional marketing. You can always take a list, whether you collect it yourself and it's your customers, whether it's something you go buy. Like, let's say you want to find left-handed golfers in a certain suburb that have a dog. Like, yeah. you, can, you can buy that list and import it into Facebook and still use it. But Facebook's just bringing it back to traditional where Facebook partnered up with all the big data companies in the world like three and a half years ago, and they made all this third-party data available. Third party is like likely to move into a house or they have this kind of car. Third party meaning a company got it, Facebook got it, you're the third party to get it. Yeah. And so like a lot of that, there's a lot of stir right now. Um, we actually did an interview last last night with that Wired magazine like we were talking about. Like they um, – <sighs> the world is freaking out about – because they, they don't know. They just don't know like you. Let, well, you know, like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. no, I was going to say, let's jump off that for a second. So Wired Magazine interviewed you. Like, that's that's kind of a get, right? That's like... Dude, I wish I could feel like as much of a big <laughs> deal as I should for that happening. Like, it's again, it becomes our networks, right? Like, I was explaining earlier, like, when Chris Lambertini's used to answer my phone calls, I used to feel like that was, like, Led let's... Zeppelin. Like, was... like... Yeah, yeah. A rock star, it was, you know. No, exactly. And so now, like, I did. I was very fortunate enough. We got interviewed by Wired Magazine, and, like, I had to Google it. I'm like, Wired Magazine wants to interview. I got an interview from, I got an email from this lady at Wired Magazine. I'm like, Wired Magazine, was it some power washing thing or something? And then I look it up, and I'm like, oh, that was Obama on the cover there. Yeah. Like, this is a big deal. So, yeah, we, uh, and, and it's, again, I bring up Chris because it was, again, just another mutually beneficial relationship. I've been working uh, working with a team, Blitz Metrics, um, We've been working with them for about two years, and they we, we've had the great opportunity to work with huge companies like Ashley Furniture, the Golden State Warriors, Nike, TiVo, UPAC, all these huge businesses that like I will never say for a second, like, hi, I'm Dave. I went in and sold these Fortune 500 companies. But we've had the opportunity to work with these huge businesses because of my friend and business associate, Dennis Yu. And this interview, too, was like a bounce pass. They were asking him about data, and he's like, Dave is the guy that knows everything about data. So Dave, you talk to Wired Magazine and there we go back. I'm like, oh, whoa. So listen, I yeah. feel a little responsible for why this isn't such a big deal for you because you knew you were going to do this interview. Yeah, so it's the one that mattered today. Exactly. I, what, what should have happened is I shouldn't have even told you. You'd have been excited for Wired, but you're more excited to talk to me. I know it's. Any time that I get to spend with you, Josh, is good time to spend. So. That's right. Well, you're a world traveler now. It's so hard to, you know, get a 
But to get off topic, go back to the tech, the, the, the pixel data and the things where you could stay in front of exactly targeted people and they know exactly what you saw, like the lawnmower thing you said. I always say like McDonald's, like everybody, you could ask a, a two-year-old. Everybody in this country knows what McDonald's is. If you like it or not, you still know what it is. Absolutely know exactly what they have. And you can sing one of their jingles probably about the Big Mac, right? But McDonald's still is in every uh, uh, billboard magazine radio newspaper ad they're on everything because they have to stay relevant they have to stay in front of you and that's exactly what you can do now with this targeting like you're talking about and i know you didn't talk about pixel data but that's a little bit on that that's i, I you know a lot more on that but that is what what will track you is that little bit of like cookies almost that sits with you right in a nutshell because like i've seen people's eyes you bring up the facebook pixel some people's eyes just go across and like throw yeah. up on themselves yeah. like <laughs> Facebook Pixel is this, it's very simple. It's a little piece of code, a little snippet of JavaScript code. You put it on your website, it lets you track. It's like a fly on the wall on your website collecting. It's not collecting data like first name, last name, social security, blood type, first name born. Like it's none of that stuff. What, where are you? Like what do you, when I talk about like tracking the path of a user, like yeah. the, it's like the page. You know that someone, you talk about like, it's your mobile ID, your user ID, your Facebook ID. So when you log onto the internet, you have a couple little things that we could equate to like your social security number in certain fashions, not sensitivity wise, but right. like you're a human being in the United States and you were assigned a number. Right. When you get on the internet, you have these couple of numbers that are assigned for you. You have a mobile ID. So like your cell phone number from whatever provider you have, you can differentiate someone like, let's say we're all at the library and Josh is sitting next to Adam, who's sitting next to Ben, who's sitting next to Dave. With a mobile ID, you can look at someone's IP address where they're logged onto the internet and then like differentiate who's at the library by their mobile ID. Right. And so like the pixel takes that data and says, this Facebook user, this number, this person happens to be Dave, they went to this page. They stayed on this page for this long. They read this content. They went to a website about this. They did, they're tracking our behavioral data. And so like you can make a rule in Facebook. Audiences in Facebook, like custom audiences, a lot of them are based off rules. And this is like software, techie kind of stuff, but it's very simple. A rule could be Facebook. Make me an audience at everyone that visits this page but doesn't fill out this form. Well, Dave, how the hell do I do that? Simple. You have a page and you say, Facebook, here's the URL, www.whatever.com backslash whatever. Facebook, here's this URL. I want you to make a rule or an audience of everyone that visited you are this URL, but they didn't do this. Well, how do we know we didn't do this? We can identify an audience. Like take everyone that visited my window cleaning page and make an audience. That's a rule. Here's that URL, www.daveswindowcleaning.com, make an audience. There's a bucket audience. Now we want to make a custom audience of people who visited that site, but they didn't fill out a form. Well, how do we know that? Because we have a thank you page. When you fill something out on the internet and you go to a page that says, thank you, Josh, for doing this. That's not the internet being polite. They're tracking you. Yeah. They know that if you hit that thank you page, you had to complete an action. There's a yeah. form there. No one can hit that thank you page without filling out that form. Yeah. So how do I make an audience of people that filled out my window cleaning page but didn't fill out a form? I say, Facebook, here's a rule. Here's a URL of people, daveswindowcleaning.com. Exclude people from this audience or make this rule. People that hit daveswindowcleaning.com backslash thank you, exclude them from this audience. Now what do I have in this rule of this bucket audience? I have people that hit my window cleaning page but didn't fill out a form because we excluded people that did fill out a form. Now we go into Home Depot, the, the lawnmower, right? Yeah. We have that now in this bucket. These are people that didn't buy the lawnmower. So now we're going to show them an ad. How do you do that? Facebook, Dave, I, I'm Facebook. Dave, who do you want to target? Hey, Facebook, I want to target people that did this rule. They did, they went in my window cleaning form, but they didn't fill out a page. They didn't buy my lawnmower. Target only these people. Well, now it's up to you as a business owner, the advertiser, to write the ad. What's the ad? Hey, stupid, here's the lawnmower you didn't buy. Buy it, retarget. Yeah. I'm following you around. So now like all of these complex things, it's as hard as you want to make it. And now we talk about, this goes back to like starting a business or doing these things or going on Facebook and complaining that you spent $100 and it didn't work. Do you know why I don't pop the hood of my Camaro and start wrenching on my engine? I don't know how. I, don't know about it. I yeah. never read a book. I never read a blog. I never listened to an article. I have no clue how to do that. So I pull my wallet out. Where's my wallet? Pull my wallet out. 
I grab some money and I pay someone to do that. I don't get online and I'm like, these cars are just crap because they're not fixable. And I bought this car and I spent this money and I spent all night, Josh, I was up all night trying to fix this car and it's fake and it doesn't work because it broke. I don't know how to use it or fix it, (laughs) but it won't work. And I'm a business owner and I'm entitled and I spent all night and this idiot on the internet was yelling on me and he told me that I could do this myself because I've been to the AutoZone website too. Right. (laughs) He told me I could do this myself. It doesn't work. It's fake. They're lying. They're stealing. I'll never (laughs) use it again. I'm leaving. Facebook's dead. The internet's dead. Like, You're, you're winning, bro. You want to know what the thing you can't do then at that point is tell people that they're wrong. That's the hardest part is like people have to figure out that they're wrong on their own. That exact scenario you just said, no, you can't be like, hey, it didn't work because you don't know what you're doing. What? You're telling me I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. But, ah. but Josh, we're, we're entitled business owners that got into the, the lowest barrier of entry business that you could <laughs> possibly get into. Do you know what you have to do to start a window cleaning business? I know what I did. Me and four idiots I knew from high school went into Lowe's. It took five of us to carry a 24-foot ladder out of Lowe's this seven years ago to my mom's house. We paid my roofing buddy $200 for two hours of his time because magically, if you, if, you, if you work with your hands for a living, you make $100 an hour, right? Window right, right, right? So we pay this guy $200, $200 for two hours of his time to show us how to like – this is after I worked for a window cleaning company – to show us how to climb up and down a ladder and like this is the thing. Starting a business, coming from corporate, quitting your job, being a technician at another company. You said, I'm gonna go start a business and I have a tax ID and I, I don't have a boss and I'm the man and I work 70 hours a week when it's all said and done off my profit to make $30 an hour, but guess what? You can't tell me I'm wrong because I started this and I have a job and I, and because if you stay at it long enough because of this low barrier of entry, I don't mean to burst anyone's bubble here because we're all successful in our own regards. But if you work for three or four years and you didn't have to go back and get a job or move back into your mom's, you were right. Yeah. You started a business. You provide a living for you, your family, the great pumpkin, like whoever you do it for. You're right. And you're right every day you wake up and can't no one tell you you're wrong because when you go to sleep at night, no matter what argument you got on on the internet, no matter what someone said about you, no matter what – person like you were on the phone for eight with AT&T for two hours and you yelled at the supervisor because you could have been out making money because you own a business and they owe you money. So you went home to your wife and I won't believe how much I was inconvenienced today. Be- man, man, man. Life is hard. Yeah. You create your own problems. If you start a business, I promise you, you will have more problems in your life than you will. If you have a job, life will be easier. If you have a job, you might even make more money, yeah. but You get to do what you want to every day. So if that's complain on the internet or smoke and yell or or hang out and talk to Josh. There you go. If you can deal with problems, you can be a business owner. That's what it is. That's why everybody's, oh, you know how much money I make? You know why you're making that money? Not just because people really want clean windows because of all the headaches you have to deal with. Get employees. I make all this money. I don't do it. Would risk your life for six bucks a window. Yeah. And I'm not talking down on it. I love love window cleaning. I love every single bit of it. But like – we have to understand the relativity of like, we're all entitled. Every yeah. single person that wakes up in the morning, they think they're right. When someone cuts you off when they're driving and you're like, you jerk, they thought they were right. Every yeah. single person does what you think is wrong, they think is correct. Oh, and yeah. so like, once you come to terms with the fact that like, dude, people are selfish, they're gonna do what they want to and the selfishness of, dude, if it's hiring a window cleaner, like it's, it's, Life is about self and self-awareness and relativity. I didn't mean to turn this into like motivational speaking hour or whatever, <laughs> but it's just like, you know, you, you look back and you look at like the phases of, I know I just me speaking selfishly here, the phases of, of being a window cleaner, you know, what do you want to do? First you start a business, you got to make a million bucks, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, that's kind of a lot of money. I don't know if I'm going to do that. So let's just do a hundred grand. I'm going to make a hundred grand, All right, We're going to get to six figures. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So you do your first year, you're like 30, 35, 40,000. You're like, I'm killing it. I'm killing it. I made as much as people make in a job. I'm, I'm murdering it. Second year, 75, 80. Maybe you hit 100 your second year and you're an anomaly. Usually third year, fourth year, maybe you get to that like six figures. And then like, you, it's not fair enough to say like the men separate from the boys, but it's really like you really figure out where you're at in your business when you have to get, it's not your second vehicle, or your second employee. 
it's the third, fourth employer, the third, fourth. When you're making the same decisions in your business in your third, fourth, or fifth year that you made your first year, you're like, you're just as broke in your fifth year. You have more debt. You have more expenses. You're trying to float it because now the, the $100 increments that used to come in, they're now thousands of dollars. But instead of that, like, okay, dude, I can go like wash windows at three houses this week. I can make 1200 and we'll be fine. Yeah. That now turned into 10 grand because you have like, people to deal with every week. Like, dude, when your payroll is $27,000 every two weeks, your problems become a little bit different. And it's not oh, to yeah. be like, I'm a big deal. We have a lot of payroll. It's like, you're not looking at how can I go out and like make up for this? You're like, what can I do I right now to, to have $7,000 up here from flat out of nowhere? Cause <laughs> that's what's due on Friday. Yeah. It's the end of the day, Thursday. I thought I was successful right now. We're talking about like two, three years ago. So it's, it's the, the balance of being able to scale it all, Josh, you were talking about like being a firefighter or just having a fire extinguisher. Yeah. It's like your ability as a person to be self-aware enough to understand as a business owner, we all want to say like, we want to do what we're good at for a living, right? But when you create these things, when you start businesses, when you hire employees, when you, dude, the hard part is like the HR. It's like, oh, yeah. what do you do with managing the guy that you know is the only person who can get a job done, but he's having a shitty day yeah. and you have to like deal with the person that has to deal with him because he's a dick, but you know, you can't, I'm sorry, I keep swearing, but like you can't get him to leave because you know that he's this cog and you're in the wheel that's happening yeah. and you have to keep the person that manages his, him happy, him happy and the two guys under him. But you're like trying to remove yourself from the business. To me, that was always harder than like, tightening your belt at five in the morning and going to wash windows. Cause like right. there are certain days you get up and you want to do that. You're like, let me just throw my headphones in and go like, get it. You know, yeah, like yeah. whatever it's the relativity to me, it's always nice to even just have, you guys are my therapy right now. Anyone watching this, I'm just like, I owe you all <laughs> bucks an hour. Cause I'm just getting to relive a lot of this stuff. But it's like the relativity of like, it doesn't matter if you're in your first year now and you're relating to anything I'm saying, or you're in, your, your 20th year now and you're relating to so, whatever, some of the other stuff I'm talking about. It's like, we all just need to understand that no matter the good and the bad, like this is all on us. Yeah. We did, we did and created all of this. So the good parts, when you got, when you're staring at like 10 grand in profit you made this week and you're like, dude, I'm out here doing it. Like the world <laughs> is great. I'm going to go spend some of this money and buy some sneakers. Or it's like, <laughs> dude, we have payroll coming up. I can't pay myself. We're going to have to tell the bank that uh, the fourth truck can't get paid until next month. Like whatever yeah. it is you're going through, it's just like, it's been a while since I sat down and like thought about it. So thank you to everyone watching, <laughs> sitting in my therapist. I appreciate it. Right. Well, cool. Well, either way, man, I appreciate you uh, letting us uh, hear the inner workings of Dave, the, the, Wired Magazine uh, interviewed Dave. It's like best-selling author, right? We should start saying that. That should be on your business cards. Like, hi, uh, David Carroll, uh, Wired Magazine interviewee. Yeah, not it'll, yet. It'll be good. I just wish I was much of a big of a deal as my friends made me feel like sometimes. That's that's what I'll know I made it. Down that's on the it. beach in Oceanside having Josh tell me about my, my interview. Hey, just so you know, uh, Chris is going to start talking to you about your plaid shirts. So he's oh, going to be dude, calling you. Exactly. I get my style from him. I mean, I, he told me where to buy them. I buy them in a place in New Jersey. Like he gave really? me the store. Oh, yeah. Chris just, Chris just told me yesterday. He's like, oh my God, dude. Uh, Dave just answered my Voxer. And I was like, really? He's like, yes, dude. I can't believe it. So it's all turned. T tables have turned. It's it's good to see. But no, I appreciate you, man, taking your time out and hanging out with us today. So I want to do something cool because you guys all listen. I know this is supposed to be an interview, and I kind of just monologued the whole thing. So I want to I want to do something nice for those of you that stuck around. So we talked about uh, we talked about Facebook. We talked about you know your data and your customer list and all this. And I'll keep this brief, but we're gonna do something cool. Um, Josh or myself, if you want to hit me up for the link, or Josh will have the link too. I'm gonna do a video for you guys of how to take whether it's your own customer base or a list you have or a list you bought, I'm going to show you how to take that list, put it onto Facebook. And let's say you're a window cleaning company you're in your first year, your 20th year, doesn't matter. You're going to send out a postcard just to the people that you've done work for previously. If it's one person, if it's a hundred thousand people, I'm going to show you how to take that list, import it into Facebook and then show people ads on that list. So before your mailers go out or while your mailers are going out, you can show people a video of you. Hey, what's up, Josh? Or hey, what's up, Minneapolis homeowner? Here's the mailer you just got. Or like I've done corny stuff like that before. But we're gonna, I'm gonna put together a video for you guys. So after you watch this, go to the link that Josh will give you, and you can get this video for free as my thank you for you guys letting 
me talk about myself for 40 minutes. Nice. Nice. Yeah, we'll definitely have that. So, And uh, what's your email? What's your contact information if anybody wants to get a hold of you? Atypedata.com, the letter A, type data.com or hit me directly dave d-a-v-e at atypedata.com nice perfect well thank you very much everybody for watching and listening like i said if you are still listening please give us a review on itunes soundcloud surely means a lot to us my number direct 862-312-2026 shoot me a text or your supplies for me big or small i love it and i appreciate you guys who do that so thanks for watching thanks for dave for being able to spend some time with us Thanks for everybody here uh, watching and spending time with us and listening to Dave. And uh, if you want your $300 check, just let him know and he'll send it right out to you. Send send the invoices (laughs) this way. I appreciate you guys. But thanks again. And uh, until next week, go out there and be epic.